Oh, hey guys, didn't realize you were here so early. Anyways, while you're here, grab a seat and we'll get into today's video. Today, we're talking about gobos. What are they? How do we use them? And how can we use them for food photography? Well, I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to do it. And I'm going to show you how you can do it. And it'll create a natural dappled light sunlight effect on our photos to really make them stand out and give them that summer and that little pop that you need. Let's get into it. Gobos. What are they? Why do we need them? How do we use them? First off, gobo means go between object. So it's something that's placed between your light source and the subject. And it blocks or modifies the light coming from your light source. Now, on here, as you can see, I have barn doors. These barn doors block light, which I'll show you in a minute. But that is a gobo because it's something between the light and the subject modifying the light. Or it could be something like this fake tree branch in between the light and your subject. Now I'm going to uh, knock off one of these lights so I can show you on the wall some of the patterns and how the effects of the gobos work. Because if I leave it lit up like this for the video, I can't project onto the wall to create the shadow that you need to be able to see because that's what we're doing. We're creating shadows, stopping light in certain areas of our scene. So let me kill one of these lights off, turn on this uh, studio light, which is just basically running a bare bulb and it's the modeling light and I can do some projections, some shadow puppetry on the wall. So hang on just a sec. All right. There we are in the dark, but I can turn this on. And as I say, with the barn doors, you can see how that light changes on the wall because it's blocking the light. So I can modify where the light goes. Now, if I take this branch and put it here, you can see the projection on the wall and it's kind of got that leaf pattern. Now, the closer the gobo is to your subject, the sharper the detail of the object. So you can see that the leaf pattern is fairly distinct. The closer I bring it to the light source, the more softer and diffused it gets. So that's something to remember when you're using gobos. The closer to the subject, the sharper the focus on the gobo, the further away and closer to the light source, the softer it gets. Now also, the size of your light source matters. The bigger the light source, the softer your shadows will be. So even though you might be in close with a smaller light like this, and it's sharp and more in focus, with a larger light source, it won't be. It'll be very soft and diffused. So you have to be aware of that. If you're using a big soft box like I've kind of got over here, right? It's like a 50 inch or something. It's a very soft light. So I'm barely, barely going to be able to see any shadowing, if I see any at all, from the gobo. So be aware of that. The larger the light source, the softer the shadow. The smaller the light source, the harder the shadow. Also, the closer the gobo is to your subject, the sharper the shadow. The further away, the softer. Got it? Clear as mud. Okay, so this is just one way of doing it, with just a tree branch to create a cool effect. You also have, I've got this little rigged up, it's basically just an old frame, and I use some cardboard in there to create a window frame, but I can create a bit of a window light look. So if I move that in, you can see how that creates that bit of pattern on the wall, which would be great behind a model or something like that. Again, the closer I bring it, the softer the diffusion, the further away I bring it, the more defined the subject gets. Now, this is a, little homemade one and you can see it's just basically a piece of white foam core that I've chopped various size holes in from very small down this end to the larger down here. Now when I put this here you can see the very cool patterns that it creates. And that's the patterning that you want to create that dappled light effect. If you uh, go outside on a sunny day, go under a tree, look at the dappled light that's on the ground. 
that's basically what we're replicating here. Now, if I take this, let me get rid of my tree branch, and bring this in here, and let me get rid of my picture frame. Let me just get rid of this for a sec. Come on. And angle this down. I can show you how the effect is on here. Now again, I need my light source back far enough to be able to create it. I'm going to have to kill this other light off. Now we're really in the dark. But you can see how I'm getting... Let me kill that light source again. It has a mind of its own. You can see how I'm getting different effects on the table. The closer this is, the sharper. The further away, the softer. So if I bring it up there, there's barely any effect from it. But as soon as I kind of come in like this, I get various degrees of the light. And that's how you create your dappled light effect. Now, when I take a picture with just this light, you end up with an image like this. You can see how I get that hot spotted kind of all over on the scene and it gives a really good lighting effect. The problem is because it's undiffused, it's a hard light. So I need to be able to soften that light out. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to bring in this big bad boy. So now I'm going to bring in a studio light behind it. That then will fill in the shadows. So let me show you now a picture of just the softbox lighting the scene, which is right here. Now you can see that it's underexposed and it needs to be because we have to add more light to the scene with the heart light source. So here's just the big light source again. Here's just the hard light source. Here's the two of them combined. And you can see how the two lights combined work so well. The small one is creating that dappled lighting effect on your surface. And your hard light is kind of modified by whatever gobo you're using. The soft light from the big soft box is filling in all the little extra shadowing and making the shadows a little softer, but still giving me that defined shape that I'm after. Now, I'm in a small home studio, so light's bouncing off this back wall and light's bouncing off my ceiling. I could simply throw up a bit of a more interesting background and it'll give it a little more texture, make it look a little better. But that's basically how the Gobo works. This is just the foam core one. I can put any shape into that I want. I can use the branch to give it that more natural light look. But I'm kind of going for the picnic table, having a meal of chicken and waffles. Nothing better than on a sunny day, having some chicken and waffles with an orange juice. But that is basically how the Gobos work. Just remember the ruling with it in your distancing from them. But that's basically it. All right, this was a short, sweet one. Here's the finished picture after I've edited it. Then here's the little set of them together so you can see the progression of it, of the, the images, and how well this works. All right, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. So, until the next time.